Good morning, baby goats. Baby goats everywhere. Hey guys, this is Daniel from the Orange Family Homestead. Houston and I are out here uh, taking care of the goats. I don't know if you can see them back there. There it goes. We just fed. Everybody's all fighting over feed troughs right now. Being noisy. But in the last couple videos that, I, that I've talked about in my goats, uh, I've kind of got a kind of told you guys I, I raise Kikos. Uh, I'm not 100% in the Kikos. Still got some boars and some boar crosses. But I really like the Kiko and I'm kind of switching over to them. I do have a Kiko belly that all my does were bred to this year. Uh, the, the Kiko goat, I, I didn't realize that it wasn't as popular in most areas of the country as it is around here. And I think a lot of people around here know what it is, but it's kind of, I guess I kind of didn't realize a lot of my viewers didn't know what a Kiko goat was. So I took some notes, did some research, and I'm going to tell you guys about Kikos and why I like Kikos and why I think you might be interested. So first off, Kiko is a meat goat. It's not a milk goat. It's not a dairy goat. Kikos are bred for for a meat goat production on a meat. You know, you're 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 talking about raising kids to to a slaughtering age and having them slaughtered. So whether they're for your own meat or for for sale, whatever it is, but they're they're a meat goat. Okay, not a dairy goat. Uh, Kikos were developed in the 1970s. They they originated in New Zealand from a feral from a feral goat. So they're originally feral goats. Uh, the Kikos, original Kikos, were really small frames, small goats. So they took some good quality does and crossed them with a, a, a dairy breed to kind of make them a little bit bigger framed and put a little more milk on them. So there's no defined breed standards for size, color, or confirmation. So as you can tell, well, I don't know if you'll be able to see here. So as you can tell, they come in all different colors, okay? So these two small ones right here are some young Kiko does. That red one back there is a Kiko doe. Uh, these two right here are Kikos, not that one. That one, yes. Those three are all Kikos, actually. Uh, so you can see they're all different colors. Uh, white is the most dominant color. Uh, one of the, the main characteristics that kind of stick out as a, as a goat being Kiko are those ears. See how their ears don't, don't flop forward and they're kind of, they kind of stand up a little bit. Okay. Most Kiko, most Kiko goats are gonna have ears like that. Now this one, her ears are, her ears are cropped because she got a little frostbite when she was a baby. So like this black one right here, see how her ears stand up a little bit? Uh, most of your Kiko is gonna be like that, as compared to this one's a boar cross and her ears flop over like a boar goat. Okay. So white is the dominant color mostly, um, but that's not the only color. So you don't see Kikos in, in shows like you do a lot of other breeds because there's no defined standards for their size, color, and conformation. So they don't show like you do a boar goat because they've got breed standards or a Nubian has breed standards. Kikos aren't that way, okay? And I don't have necessarily purebred stock. Uh, mine are just, what? Hang on. Will I get you a goat? Yeah. Uh, you catch one. They're too fast? Okay, well give me just a few minutes, okay? Uh, Kikos have a very strong maternal instinct, so they're great mothers. Unlike boars, uh, when I was raising strictly boar goats, a lot of those mamas don't have a real strong maternal instinct, so babies are born, mama doesn't really know what to do with them, they hit the ground and they never really thrive. Kikos, super strong maternal instincts. Uh, those mamas really take care of their babies once they hit the ground. Uh, these babies hit the ground and jump up and take off like deer and mama's just really does a really good job taking care of them Kiko goats are really fast growing. They do really good off the land. They don't require a lot of extra feed Try to get Lucy. Try to get Lucy. I will in a minute, bud. Kikos, uh, they grow fast. Their kids grow really fast, okay? Um, they they do really well thrive really well off of off of browse and grass and whatever you've got them on pasture um this pasture you can see behind me is pretty well gray shorts because my goats are locked up right now and they're on hay and I feed them just a little bit. Um, so they're not out browsing right now a whole lot. Typically, Kikos will prefer brush over pasture. Uh, I don't have a lot of grass pasture. Most of my place is brush and, and uh, it's overgrown a lot of it. I do have some grass pasture, but 
the good thing about Kikos is they prefer that brush. So uh, some people, I and mean, I've got a pretty good friend that does this, they will run Kiko goats with their cattle herd and it helps it helps their uh, overall pasture quality because the goats, the Kiko goats come through and they clean up the pasture. They eat the brush and, and briars and stickers and things that the cattle won't eat and they don't have to spray their pasture as much. So it allows those cattle producers to use less chemical on their pasture and they still keep their weeds under control. And I've got a cat crawling up my leg. What are you doing, Hardy? Huh? That cat is something else. Kiko goats are very parasite resistant, so you don't have near the worm problems. Daddy, there's a sticker in here. There's a sticker in here. Sticker Daddy. in there. Okay. Stand by, guys. Let me fix the sticker situation. Here, let's put your glove back on. Is that sticker out? I think so. Can't get it right. He's doing great. He don't care. Did you get it? Yep. Oh man, okay. Gloves and toddlers don't mix. Anybody that's ever raised a toddler yeah. knows the struggle of putting gloves on them. Ugh. All right, so as I was saying, uh, Kikos are really resistant to parasites. You don't have that worm load that you do with boars. Um, a lot of boar goat producers have to worm their goats um, all the time. I mean, they're constantly worming their goats. Uh, Kikos, most people that raise them and get really serious into producing Kikos, uh, never, they never worm their goats. They cull, if they, need, if they find one that needs to be wormed frequently, they'll cull them. So that's one way of building that parasite tolerance. Yeah or parasite resistance, excuse me. Um, another thing about Kikos is you don't have to trim their hooves. A lot of goats require a lot of hoof trimming. Kikos do not. So that's another way, you know, that the, your bigger producers, if they run across a Kiko that they're having to trim hooves on, they cull that one and, and breed, they try to breed that out of their herd. So parasite resistant, don't have to trim their hooves. So as you can kind of tell from my herd in the background, uh, Kikos are really good for crossbreeding. A lot of guys will take their Kiko does and put a boar billy or a Nubian billy, something else over the top of their Kiko does. Uh, it makes for, it gives them the traits of both. So you get that really strong maternal instinct. You get a good mom taking care of those babies. Uh, you run a, a boar buck, a boar billy over the top of some Kiko does. You get a, a, a kid that, that grows fast, puts on a lot of lean muscle and gets to that slaughtering age a lot earlier. Um, you know, you take a, uh, put a Nubian over the top of Kikos, you're going to come out with some, some does that are going to produce some milk. They're not going to be, you know, uh, uh, like a, a milk dough for your homestead necessarily, but you're going to get a, a good quality dough that'll make a lot of milk and can, can be a good, um, for your herd. What are you doing up here, man? Trying to break it. Why are you trying to break that log? But you can see these babies just do really good. Kiko, Kiko babies just, I mean, they, they thrive really well. Um, they do great in this early kidding season. You know, it's cold. Oklahoma weather is not consistent. You know, we had single digit temperatures last weekend. And then a couple days ago, we were up in the 70s and now we're back down in the 30s. And it doesn't seem to bother these little baby goats at all. You thirsty there, little mama? Yeah! Dad. Why are you breaking my sticks? Thank you. So that's some reasons why I have Kikos. Uh, I'm not trying to persuade you into saying they're, they're the best. Um, you got to figure out what's the best for you and why you're going to have goats and why you're raising goats. If you want milk goats, they're not for you. If you're looking for show goats, Kikos are not the ones to go with. But if you're just somebody that's that's just trying to raise some meat goats just for a small farm, you know, goat operation. The Kikos are something to look into. They're worth having around. They're really good mamas. They don't require a lot of maintenance. They're good self keepers. They do really good on browse on just the natural forage. Um, you know, they're just awesome goats to have around. So I don't know, worth looking into. You might like them, might not. There's a lot of really good resources on the internet. Uh, check into them. There's there's a lot of studies been done on Kikos and 
a lot of people that know a lot about it and know a lot more than I do. Uh, just kind of throwing out my ideas and, and why I like them. They seem to be doing great here. So anyways, well, thanks for watching guys. I do appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we'd love to have you subscribe and stick around for future videos. Uh, check out some of our old videos if you haven't seen those. And uh, thanks for watching. We do appreciate it. And we'll see you later, guys.